All right, the really, really top or toughest, I suppose, that we're going to see absolute value equations. You see right away, the, hopefully, the difference with what we've been looking at before. You'll notice we've got x's on both sides of these uh, equations. That's going to tell you that these are very, very different. Here's all that stuff I've been saying about checking solutions. You're like, why, why? They always check out. Here's where we're going to start to see solutions that don't check out. You're going to start to see something called extraneous solutions. Uh, these are solutions that even though they seem like they should work, like we get them as answers, once we go back and check them, they don't work out. Uh, and what we need to do is make sure that we reject those answers. They are extraneous. They do not work when we check them. Uh, the good news is, though, the process we've been learning all along still applies for these. Make sure your absolute value bars are isolated, and they are in this first example, so we can go, right go ahead right away and split this into our two equations. So for your first equation, again, keep everything the same. Just drop the bars, so we have that. For your second equation, that bizarro equation, what's in the bizarre, what's in, what's in the paren, I can't talk now. What's in the absolute value bars stays the same, but anything outside changes signs, including that variable part, so negative four x. Let's go ahead and solve each of these. We have variables on both sides now, so hope you remember how to do those. I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides in this equation, and get 12 is equal to two x. Divide both sides by two will get me one, I'm going to say possible solution of x equals 6. I'm not going to circle that just yet. Uh, on the other side, again, I'll subtract 2x from both sides to get that one started. Uh, 12 is equal to negative 6x. If I divide both sides by negative 6, I get negative 2 as a second possible answer. Now, here's where that check is really, really important. Let's start with 6 and check that one first. You need to check in the original equation. Don't check what you split this into. Uh, that's not going to tell you whether it's going to work or not. So let's replace both uh, sixes or both x's with sixes and see what happens. So I have 12 times or 2 times 6 plus 12, that's 12 plus 12, which is 24, and the absolute value of 24 is 24 for the left hand side. Plugging 6 in on the other side, I get 4 times 6, which is also 24. So yay, 24 equals 24. Uh, 6 absolutely works out fine, it's a fine solution. Watch though, be amazed at what happens when I go to check negative 2 in the problem. Again, the original, not what you split it into. Those of you that really get absolute value probably see right away why this is going to be a little bit weird. Uh, if I start actually on the 4x side, if I plug in negative 2 for x, I get negative 8 on that side of the equation. And again, right there is probably where some of you are thinking, okay, I see why that can't. This is, pos this is impossible. It's not going to work out. Uh, but if you don't see it, watch what happens. So I'm going to take 2 multiply that by negative 2 and add 12. Uh, negative 2 plus 12, or uh, 2 times negative, t 2 times negative 2, there we go, is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8, and the absolute value of 8 is also 8. So I end up with this, this equation, this statement that's saying 8 is equal to negative 8. And obviously that can't possibly be true. 8's not equal to negative 8. So what we found was we found an extraneous solution. This negative 2, we have to go and make sure we cross out. It is absolutely not an answer to this. It's an extraneous answer. The only solution uh, is positive 6. I just want to get you started on this second problem before I have you try it on your own. Um, again, make sure your absolute value bars are isolated. They are, so go ahead and split them. One of your equations is identical to the beginning. Just drop the absolute value bars. So 4x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 9. And then what I wanted to talk about before I let you try it on your own, your bizarro equation. Some of you probably will figure it out, though. Uh, what's in the bars is still protected. Anything outside the bars changes signs. In this case, everything changes signs that's outside. So it becomes not only negative 2x, but also negative 9. Uh, why don't you go ahead and try that problem from there, otherwise my work will pop up in just a couple seconds if you want to check your solution. In this case, both solutions, uh, positive 5 and negative 4 third, both of them checked out, so they both were fine. If you uh, had rejected negative 4 thirds, uh, I would suggest you go back and double check what you typed in for x. Some people uh, use the decimal, which is, uh, which is negative, or negative 1.3 repeating forever, but what they 
end up typing in their calculator to check it is just negative 1.3, which is the rounded answer of that. So that's why it may not have checked out for you. But in this case, yes, both of them do work.